radius. Yeah, so what if, let's call the charge of the positive thing Q1. Let's call the charge of the negative thing Q2. And the closer they get, the stronger they bond. So let's put that on the bottom so that as this number gets smaller, the energy gets bigger. It turns out to act a lot like the law of gravitation where it's the square. It's fine. So we want things that are small but very charged. So, uh, TJ. Oh, TJ. Okay. Where's TJ? TJ. Which one melts higher based on this argument? Why do you want R squared again? Um, based on the radius. Well, lithium has a small radius. Good. So that does melt at a higher temperature. Good. What if you were comparing TJ um, these two? And by the way, don't put a plus or a minus two here just because there's two uh, Fs because TJ, it's not, you don't break, it's, you're just breaking one at a time. So it's still a minus one for the F. So TJ between magnesium fluoride and sodium fluoride, which one melts higher? Well, let's let's explore that. Same period, same row. So TJ, here's the 11 protons in NA. And it's on the third row to start with, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put three principal energy levels. You with me? Yeah. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. You still with me? Yeah. 3s1. But uh, charge. NA plus. So we took this away. It got smaller, right? So Na plus is a nice, it's a definitely smaller than Na. Now let's do Mg. 12 protons. So this first ring is going to be a little closer to those 12 protons. The second ring is going to be a little closer to those 12 protons, right? And now the third ring that it had was bigger than Na because of shielding. But because you're losing it and you're, what do we, what do we call it when two guys have the same number of electrons? Iso what? Isoelectronic. So in fact, Mg is smaller than Na, TJ. And what's the charge of Mg? Two. Two. Two plus. And it was only one plus. So not only is Mg smaller, making it more attractive, it's also got twice the charge, making it more attractive. Connor, then Yode. Um, if there's an R squared, we're dealing with two different radii. What are we... Oh, 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 I'm so sorry I never defined that. R is uh, the distance between the nucleus of one... Whatever. Oh, uh, okay. So... There to there is your R. Sorry about that, guys. I never defined that for you. Wait, so why is it R squared? So just that's what the laws of nature do. That's just how the math works out. So um, basically saying that so with a lower radius and a higher um, charge, they're more likely to attract. Correct. And they have a higher melting point as a result. Okay, you guys are doing really well. Just be glad that I don't lecture every day of the whole year because... Exhausting. No, you don't. It's exhausting. I like lectures. No, you lectures don't. are easy. Yes, yeah. like exactly. You, they, yeah. you don't really learn. <laughs> You're only understanding this now because of all the struggles you guys have had all year. That's the only uh, reason no. this is really intense. <coughs> okay. So that was bit number one and bit number two. Bit number two continues on this board. Please write this in your notes. Uh, Las notas, por favor. Escriben. No hablo español. Si vous plaît, écrit dans le whatever. Écrit dans le feuille de papier. Wow, that sounded actually pretty good. It's because he... This is Canadian. It's because he's like Japanese. It's because he's Canadian. It's because he's Canadian. He doesn't speak French. Okay. Stereotype. No, okay. Canada came from France, though. Let's talk about this graph. First, ionization energy on the Y, atomic number on the X. Wait, 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 is this for what? 
Ionization energy continued. So, notice some trends. So, Colby, uh, let me get my. Ian. Ian. Yes? Going across a period. And please know that periods are the ones that go across. Those are the same as rows. Because every new period has a new shell. Yes. Okay, so don't get that wrong because then you'll get a, a, an easy problem wrong. So periods go across. Oh, for the heaven's sakes, Diego, shush. What? I don't know what you were saying, but it wasn't going to... Whatever, <laughs> period. Okay, so we're going to go across. So, uh, Ian, notice as you go left to right across any row, what happens to ionization energy? So from hydrogen to helium... It's going to increase. And from lithium to neon. It's going to increase. Okay, that was the easy part. Here comes the hard part. <coughs> Zach, just make sure you don't think I just did it. Wasn't, it was random. Okay, can you explain, get rid of this, can you explain why boron's ionization energy should be higher than beryllium according to the trend, but it ain't? So I'll give you a hint. Oh, is it a different stuff, shell? Yeah, good. So here's hydrogen, helium, helium, lithium, beryllium, beryllium. boron, is he gonna start carbon, <laughs> nitrogen. So here's beryllium. Yeah, you're so boron. Look. Here's beryllium. Okay, so to remove an electron from beryllium, this guy, you have to remove one of these, okay? Here's boron. Please understand this because it's such an easy point on the test if they ask you. Zach said it's in a different subshell. That is correct, and that's not a complete...